Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of this honor. We will just continue where we left off last time and we'll see what's gonna happen next. I mean I know, but maybe some of you don't. Let's not waste any more time and just jump straight into the game. The Hound's Pit Pub. Hidden allies. Hidden in an old bar on the river, your new allies have plans to share with you. Meet, meet with the loyalists' inner circle to learn what they've got in mind. This is the Hound Pit's pub. Closed for business. Half the district marked off as dead from the plague. We're right yes. under the Lord Regent's nose, and he don't know a thing. Cool of course, if anyone the... finds out what we're up to, the watch will break in with swords drawn. And now that you've escaped, the Lord Regent's going to be tearing the city apart. It's gonna say a bit. Up to meet Admiral Havelock and the rest of the loyalists. The Admiral's a man to be reckoned with. If anyone can help you find that missing girl, Lady Emily, and clear your name, he can. Can I speak now? I don't know. I was gonna say, it's a cool concept uh, to have like only a part of the building that's been broken off as like a tower. Because it shouldn't be a tower, it should be a building. First, continue and find out who our friends are. I expect they're hard at work in there. Best join them. They'll help you get whoever really killed the Empress. You late to Samurai? So it's starting at last, Admiral. We found our man. Even after six months in Cold Ridge Prison, he slipped out like it was nothing. Yes. Not surprising. He was the personal bodyguard of the Empress. You've heard the story. Yes, I have. It still amazes me that someone could get to the Empress and young Lady Emily. No one knows the real story, Trevor. We all have our suspicions. We'll know the truth in time. He's strong and quick. But I hope he understands subtlety as well. This isn't one of your fancy dress parties. The reality is that we need men killed. Have you ever killed a man? Only with my whip. But it's a fair point, as always. He'll be here soon, and I'm looking forward to meeting him. Okay. Now, first of all, I see something shiny over here. We can continue this later, Lord. Pepper. Boys! The man of the hour is here. Corvo, I'm Admiral Havelock. A true servant of the Empire, like you. Until the Lord Regent purged those of us who wouldn't recognize his claim on the throne. And I'm Lord Trevor Pendleton. I represent the nobility in our little group, but we all act as equals here at the Hound Pits pub. This is a momentous occasion, Corvo. I'm going to come out with you. We've been building a coalition of loyalists aimed at ending the Lord Regent's tyranny and restoring the throne. At risk of execution, we're committed to finding young Lady Emily and seeing her crowned as Empress. We've got big plans, but we can't do any of it without you. We need your skills, your ability in a fight, and in helping us. We're going to help you destroy the men who murdered the Empress. Sorry, you must be exhausted. We can discuss this further after you've recovered. But before you retire, you should introduce yourself to Piero. He's challenging at times, but his industrious mind buys him that right. I will. Oh. Piero's as much an artist as a technician. He's going to be crafting the gear you'll need. Go talk to him and then get some sleep. We can talk more when you've rested. Can I drink your beer? I can't. What is it? Coins. Okay, so I'll just go around here. What happens if I throw a bottle at him? Hmm? Hmm. I 
let's see what we have here. I'll probably skip this part if I don't find anything interesting. But if I'll do, you know. I once served under Admiral Havelock. Captain Havelock then. I don't know if he remembers me, but I fear it's rude to ask. I don't want to embarrass him. Probably. Can I see? I hope this is not where you're sleeping, my guy. Because if it is. Ooh, I think it is. Why? They I was just so a many... common river man, hauling parcels and such along the river. But I know how to keep my trap shut, I do. They have so many rooms inside of this. Let's see. Mysteries of Asia. It's a. Well, I haven't learned how to say this word. From a book on the far continent Pandasia. At the Academy of Natural Philosophy, they speak of the Pandasia continent as a place of wonder, where all of life has in entwined and blossomed across eons, producing a vibrant ecology unrivaled in the civilized world. The, the overseers from the Abbey of the Everyman, by contrast, talk of horror and heresy, of cults and submen engaged in brutal, perverse rituals. The few who have traveled to the far continent and come back to the Isles, those who have actually touched the soil there, have returned with notes that describe vast deserts, deep jungles and outlandish creatures that defy belief. Once in a generation a great effort is mounted to build a colony there, in hopes of this someday growing into a port city to rival them all itself. But to date these attempts have all ended in madness and failure. Oh. Well thank you sir. Uh -huh. More coins. The Admiral served in the Navy under the Empress, but something happened with the Lord Regent that drove the Admiral out, if I understand it right. Thank you, Cecilia. Oh, this is my bed. Hmm. It's Cuthbert versus Blackie. Where are the most vicious hounds of the city as they Friend one another by John Fay. Oh, oh, oh. Do not attempt to house or care for a friend or family member who shows signs of blood on their face and chest area. The only way to help them is to bring them to the city walk. They will be taken to the flooded district for treatment. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Let's see what else is there. Wallace! If I may, I am the personal assistant to Lord Pendleton, and one of the senior servants at Pendleton House, as was my father. Now I am entrusted with this house, the home of the Loyalists. I have never seen the Admiral fail at any venture. If order can be restored to the city of Dunwall, I believe he can do it. If anyone can get your old life back, it's him. Thank you, Wallace. What is Cecilia doing looking at the door? Cecilia, are you alright? Oh, they're both waiting for me to go out again. No, no, Wallace, you can stay there. Stay and be happy, Wallace. Oh, uh -huh. what is this? 
Ah, 100 coins. And a pouch. Oh. This belong to you, Lord Pendleton. Pleased to meet you, Master Corvo. I saw you at court in happier days. But you might not remember. I was once a close ally to the Lord Regent, Hiram Burroughs. Back when he was just the spy master. He's one manipulative bastard, I can tell you that. Hmm. Well then. I'm stealing There's everything. There's something distinguished about you, Corvo. Was there nobility back in your family line? I wouldn't be surprised. I just stole everything from your room, my guy. I think he doesn't know what distinguished means. My That's your secret. been installed at last with no small amount of complaining by that antiquated boatman. The others have no idea what it's like to suffer as I have. Speaking of which... Wallace, please breathe two bottles of Dunwall Red, never mind which, and fetch a clean glass. <sighs> well, I'll begin again tomorrow. Hmm. So he's the one who's making Sam. Why is your door different? Hmm. Ho 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 I have a key. Actually I don't remember ever coming inside of this place before. <laughs> Gaffer's Tale, Volume 2. That's Crazy words from the travel journey of a whaler in his final years. A Gaffer's Tale, Volume 2, or A Gaffer's Final Task. After more than a quarter of a century, I am done with whaling, too broken to continue. I have seen all the corners of the Isles and made more coin than most men see in a lifetime. But it's all gone. I lived through an emperor and watched his daughter take the throne. Very young empress she was, but slain so young. Everything beautiful comes to die. I have eaten in every part of the known world and sailed to the loneliest waters you could imagine. I have seen the cliffs around Pandasia, even the best of it doesn't give me an ounce of joy. The years come back across my dreams as a line of butchered bodies. Long, sleek and singing among the wa waves under the moonlight. Only to be spared by ugly, speared by ugly, we weather-scarred men who have put knife each other for a for a good pair of boots. Jesus, this sentence was hard to read for me. <laughs> Each year I had less time to come home. My tongue forgot the language of small chatter and those who lived in the cities thought me odd. My sister Nini, Nina hardly knew that I what to say to me during our visits. When she lost her business to the Lord Regent's crooked barrister, I was a hundred miles east of Morley. Gaff hand frozen from the sl sleet as we tracked the first bull well we'd seen in months. I helped her as much as I could, but Nina died in the early days of the plague. None of it mattered. If I'm jaded and bitter, it's because this industry has taken away my dreams. The world has beaten me. Oh. That's... It wasn't a sarcastic old that <laughs> Oh, a Gaffer's Tale Volume 1! A Gaffer's Tale Volume 1, or a Gaffer's Earlier Adventures. My sister Nina and I left Pivia together, saying goodbye to, your, to our aunt, the woman who had raised us since childhood, living behind our home city of Yarrow, to the, and the cold but beautiful white landscapes we've always known. We boarded the ship for Dunwall. Our parents had left us with a sizable inheritance, and we spent half of it getting to this. We spent half of it getting to the capital city and establishing a small. Import shop dedicated to Tivian furs. Once I'd helped Nina establish the business, I was free to pursue my dream. Signing on with a whaling ship was the most exciting thing I've ever done, and I saw it as a means to an end. Someday I would captain my own crew and eventually uh, own a fleet of similar vessels. With tears in her eyes, Nina kissed me farewell, and I did not see her again for many months. As an apprentice to the Gaffer, I got to see the tracking and killing of the great beasts up close. Nothing had ever fired my spirit so as the wind and pounding waves, racing after a, a wounded whale being pulled by a skein of cables embedded in his thick flesh. I changed more in in those first seven months than I had in the previous seven years. Whaling was beginning to put its mark on me, 
so that Nina barely recognized me when I returned. Tanned and sinewy with muscle. Weathered creases already wrinkling in the corners of my eyes. But she could see that I was filled with joy having found my purpose. So, what happened between here and there that he got so depressed? Admiralty and the fleet. While each of the Isles has some form of naval fleet, none is more evident than that of Bristol, with its long, proud history of great ships and the admirals who command them. Boys come of age in the cities of Bristol hoping to someday captain such a ship, and fa family dynasties are made by these captains who track down infamous pirates or crush sedi seditious uprisings as during the Morley insurrection. In times of war and peace, Bristol continues to innovate at sea. The ship designs of Anton Sokolov himself now represent the highest standard in the whaling trade, allowing crews to haul their kill up over the deck and begin their butchery and processing, even as the ship returns to Dunwall. The crews can be seen working in their latest well as the ship moves slowly up the Renhaven River, coming to dock with one of the powerful warehouse companies such as the Grey Greaves Whaling House, Suspended in the rigging over heads and backlit by the setting sun, the silhouette of one of these creatures makes a moving sight as it cruises to its final resting place in the industrial heart of the capital city. Jesus, that was a lot to read, bro. And more! Have luck, log entry one. It has been days since our men were dispatched to stash weapons for Corvo in the old sewer. They have not returned, so I can only hope that they succeeded in getting the packages delivered. Piero spent considerable time and resources making these things. If I could find a way to mass produce them, the Dunwall Navy would secure its place as a dominant force on the globe. But back to Corvo. Can he actually break out of Coleridge? And if so, will he make his way here? I personally give, give him odds of 1 in 5. This motherfucker. Log entry 1-4. Seems we've moved to a new phase. Martin's improvisations have borne fruit. And the former bodyguard has been Freed and is en route to the staging location. The Pendleton's voting bloc and my military connections. All we've lacked is the ability to project lethal force in a controlled manner against a previously inaccessible... Ah, to the point, we need a man who can kill the bastards for us. Corvo is more than capable of that, I have no doubt. End ball. Is this off? Switch. Now I like him less because he didn't believe in me. <laughs> Point book. Exert from a book of sea shanty sung by sailors. What will you do with a drunk whaler? What will you do with a drunk whaler? Okay, so this is just. Aha. Uh -huh. Feed him to the hungry rats for dinner. Slice his throat with a rusty cleaver. Hmm, also nice. Stuff him in a sack and throw him over. Hmm, mm hmm, okay. It's a good song. I think the kids should start singing that song in school. What are you? I thought you were Cecilia. My, you must be Corvo. I am. I am Lydia, at your service. Your room is upstairs and ready. Thank when you. they told me who it was, well, I thought you'd be older, like the Admiral. You like it? Lydia. Lydia, look. Litany on the White Cliff, excerpt from a series of overseer invocations by High Overseer Abraham Templeton. And I say to you, brothers, is it here that we make our stand as a righteous force against the growing darkness? Is it here that we unite against the spirits of the unknown that would drag us screaming into the night, never to return to our homes, to our families? Together we will serve as a rod to those who would stray from the herd, from the foggy grey wastes of the outsider. Hmm. We will burn a bright fire with our virtuous actions so that others will not lose their way. And to those who choose to wander beyond the walls of our homes and in far places, we will strike at them swiftly before they whisper to their neighbors, filling their hearts with strangeness and doubt. 
Wikipedia. What are you reading? Attention, citizens of Dunwall. Mm -hmm. The old port district has been added to the evacuation list. The weeper count for the month of C has increased. The Lord oh Regent God. has decreed that plague ordinances will remain in effect through the month of rain. Stay alert and the stay loyal. Of rain. Stay loyal. Yes. I read this one already. Yeah, okay. Good. Good. But there's two new books. Excerpt from a theater theater play. Lord Nathan Bell shaking with outrage. How dare you, sir? Well, so in my very home. I should hang you over the watch, depraved Tyrion. Prince Kalistar, moving closer. That's a harsh welcome for reality, my lord. Your daughter treated me with much more hospitality. Alas, she has gone out for the evening, leaving me alone. Lord Nathan Bale, stammering, studying the younger man, younger man before him. What are you doing? Leave this house. Go back to your frozen wasteland, pale rascal. Prince Kalistar, smiling coyly. Reaching out. No need for anger between us, Lord Bale. Is it so wrong for me to be here? As I've proven, I've developed I've developed an affinity for you and your family. Oh, Nathan Bale gasping. Oh my, Callista, your skin is so warm it burns. Okay. The Shadow on Bitter Leaf. Okay, I think I haven't I haven't read this one. A longer work of fiction. Finding my way to the feeble light of the dying fire, I saw her working. A large needle moved in her hand, following precise esoteric patterns, knots and loops of seamstress craft from ancient days. Beneath her needle, his body clenched and shuddered, shaking the whole the wooden table. Jeez, I can't read. Morbid fascination pushed me closer until she turned her blank face toward me, resting the needle on in his flesh. With a refined tone, she addressed me. So you are the lover, I presume. You too have been unfaithful, and it's now your turn to be mended. Oh. Okay, so the toilet has nothing else for me. Read this. Okay, so I've been there, I've been there, I've been there. Now let's go down another one. What is the aha uh -huh money? <laughs> money. That's it. I have a key, right? So I should be able to go. I'm not sure. Aha. Uh -huh. Uh-huh. Jesus. I'm never gonna go into the level, I'm just going around here. Give you an all. Abandoned apartment key is needed. Come. Something in the trash? No. Give you an all. Okay, maybe I should go talk to Piero. But I still have the key. Was it that key? Or is it from there? The outside walks among us. Oh, there's something there. I think I saw something there. Ah, ah, ah. You can't fool these eyes. Nope, it wasn't the key for me. Oh, I feel bad for Simon. Anyways. Piero! I'll be crafting your weapons to steal and gear. stuff from you. All custom work for you. I will create the tools of a master. No! This cannot happen now. The tank of whale oil is running. Will you get a new tank from upstairs, please, while I hold this in place? Be careful. Oil is unstable. And when it explodes, there is a 
terrible news. Sorry, Pierre, but I'm first going to read all of the well or the filing. Refi refilling station. Sokolov no longer has the upper hand with regard to supplies of well oil. Uh, the good admiral has paid for the installation of my own system, which will enable me to work in this place. The oil tank dispenser, when activated, will produce an empty vessel for fuel. When the empty tank is held near the oil tank refill pump, the magnetic attractor should take the tank and lock it in the correct configuration. Using the lever will begin the refilling process. Once refilling is completed, the tank can be removed and placed in service. Extreme caution must be used when in handling the full tanks, they are quite unstable. The system is calm and well engineered. It appears that the Greed's oil company has something correct has done something correct before us. And you the Academy teaches that absurd idea that the energy in whale oil arises from the need to maintain life functions at extreme ocean depths. The pressure in the cold are too much to endure without it. I speculate that a human being might, by a process of adaptation, produce high energy humors in the body. I could build a tank that would slowly increase pressure on a subject over a long period of time and then observe them for years if need be to see if the formulation of energetic substances develop. Surely the Empress would be able to furnish me with facilities subject to the necessary legal amnesty. Hello, Processing. From the founder of Greed's Whale Howl by Ebenezer Greed. On at sea, they secured the beast with hooks, with lines cast from the main ship and from several smaller boats. Boyus? Bo. Buy. Bo. 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 I know the word, but I can't do the sounds in my mouth. <laughs> Keep the whale from diving deep. Once it's caught, a larger hook is driven through the tail, which is used to hoist the creature up through the chute. They moan and bellow for some time as the men get them on the deck, then lift them onto the scaffolding overhead. The ship adjusts its prow and returns to port in Dunwall, where the crew works on the great creature, slicing off the fattiest parts while it still lives. Great. Whale vivisection. From the notes of a natural philosopher aboard the whaling ship. Remarkably, each specimen, it's each specimen I had the pleasure of studying during the voyage possessed some minor variance in psychology. On the second leg of the trip, east of Tivia, the crew hauled aboard a female, some 42 inches, inches only, in length. I estimate she weighed 35 tons, and the ship sat low, rocking side to side through the night with her thrashing. My candlelight, I took her apart, sketching and taking notes. Against her bellowing, I cut into the mass of tentacles around her mouth. Within, I found row upon row of teeth and baleen running along the upper jaw. Through this broom-like structure, I assume she filtered food from the water that was too small to be chewed. Anything else? Going once. Oh, Sorry, Pierre, I'm still reading all of your secrets. A series of newspaper articles from prominent natural philosophers by Pierre Joplin. It is through no fault of my own that we, that the average citizen has expressed a preference for Sokolov's elixir, elixir over my own formula, sold as Pierre's remedy, a name I did not choose. If I must know the, if you must know the truth, the public has spoken. It's usual message of idiocy, idiocy, spending their coin as means of selecting Sokolov's formula over mine, which I believe to be equal if not superior. Much has been made of the, made of the pop popularity of these concoctions as a means of resisting this remarkable new plague. I say remarkable because this strain works with, with an efficiency we have not seen in the history of the Empire. This plague, now making its way through the city of Dunwall, is unrivaled in its, in its effectiveness. I have studied it within the blood of those afflicted, and it's nearly perfect, elegant in fact. 
And while it's true that Piero Dramadi and Sokolov's elixir are known to protect the body against the plague equally, my own has properties not fully understood which relate to the mind itself and the spirit. It is in this way that my formula wins out. Here is where one should pay attention to its content. To this contest. <coughs> Jesus. For you see, Sokolov's elixir, with its emphasis on the brute animal body, is the craft goo better suited for livestock. The subtle and secret variants and the key ingredients making up Piero's remedy ensure that it works on the higher functions that separate humankind from the mindless blue jawed hagfish swimming in the Renhaven. Just get it near the receptacle. Magnetism will do the rest. Yes, Piero, I'm still reading all of your stuff. Piero, no, I will not sign off these purchases. A bag of powdered crystal, Tivian ore, and what's wrong with the metal from metals in crystal? King Sparrow feathers, if you need feathers, sacrifice your own pillow. Maybe at the academy everything you needed was paid off by tariff and handed out willy-nilly. But this is my bar, or what's left of it, and we're operating on a budget. We're running low on fo oil, food, elixir, building materials, and everything else. So you've got to slow down. While I'm footing the bill, I will not approve your purchases unless they are absolutely required. No more copper wire or special herbs. If you need those things, go out and scavenge them. Half of the city is in ruins, so no one's going to miss one of the odd... Miss any of the odd crap you seem to need. Admiral Havelock. Finally! Anything else? Oh, wait. Here, sorry. There seems to be so much more. Sokolov technology and the new age. From a recent book detailing Sokolov's machines. One of the advantages of Sokolov technologies is that they share the same magnetic socket for the tanks of processed whale oil they use as fuel. When the tank is exhausted, another can be plugged into place with ease, and the process is simple enough that any common workman or even the lower guardsman of the city watch can handle the task. This applies to the arc pylon and wall of light security systems, as well as the powered car carriages used for transport by those few who are wealthy enough to afford them. The only obvious downside of Sokolov's design is the vola volatility of the tanks themselves. Few incidents have occurred, resulting in damage to property or bodily harm whenever one of the tanks exploded. Okay. So. Now I can put the level. Perfect. Thank you, Corpus. Here. See? The assassin's mask. You're a wanted man, so everyone in the city knows your face. But this mask will mean terror to them. If you just hold still, the fit must be precise. There. Can you see normally? See the lens out of alignment. There. Better now? I could create more for you. Upgrades for your gear, weapons, munitions. But our situation here is desperate. Scavenge the city for valuables, and I will resell them on the black market. That should give us the money to craft the things you need. Tell me what I can okay. make. Okay. Let's have a look. Upgrades! Hmm. Mask optics, new. Bolt capacity is, is important. Sword crossing. Is the sword more effective by unlocking blades and pushing against enemies? No, I won't be needing this. Pulse, pistol upgrades, and adds short range spread damage. Nope. Oh, this is good. Mm, is it though? I think crossbow is what I'll be needing the most. Because I'm doing it stealthy. Yeah, that's it. So I'll go for this. No, I'll go for this. And this. And this. That's that's all I can afford. You must be exhausted. I am. I advise that you get some sleep. Your life will get even more difficult soon. You should rest while you can. I will. Sleep well. Stop being creepy.
somewhere else. It's the room I was just in. Ooh, I'll listen to the rain. So good. I can only go here, okay. Ah! Ah yes, of course. How could I not? Hmm. Okay. Hello, Corvo. Um, hello. Your life has sir? taken a turn, has it not? The Empress is dead. Her precious daughter Emily is lost somewhere in the city, and you will play a pivotal role in the days to come. For this, I have chosen you and drawn you into the void. I am the outsider. And this is my mark. There are forces in the world and beyond the world. Great forces that men call magic. And now, these forces will serve your will. Use this newfound power. My gift to you. <laughs> Come find me. Mm, power blink. Press left mouse button to execute a fast and stealthy forward dash through the world. You can use it to move upward, but the distance is reduced. Aiming at ledges will allow you to blink forward and climb up. Hold left mouse button to the station to see the Fall on that too. You cannot save her, you cannot save her, you cannot save her, you cannot save her, you cannot save her. Okay, so... Hero's Spiritual Remedy. Hmm, what if I don't want? Oh, what is this? Whale oil. Fish. Black crab. River crust. Boy, you ugly ass. Corvo, I'm very sad. They say that you're dead like mother, but I'm going to put this note in a bottle and throw it in the river because I do not believe them. Living here is very strange. I do not like it. So please come for me if you can. Oh, poor Emily. Please come to me if you can. I don't think that there's a whole last whale over there. Well, you, you are angry. That's what you are. Probably the wall. Yeah, the wall. Castilian. White cliff. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This these are dudes looking at another dude. That's cool though. The um, thing in a jig. that follow your trials will be great corvo seek the ancient ruins bearing my mark in the lonely places of your world and at shrines raised in my name these ruins will grant you powers beyond those of other men to help you find these ruins i give you this the heart of a living thing molded by my hand with this heart, you will hear many secrets, and it will guide you toward my rooms, no matter how they may be hidden. Listen to the heart now, and find another room. 
I really like that heart. The heart. Equipping the heart in your left hand helps you locate bone shards or runes even through walls. The heart beats and lights up when they are facing a bone charm. When you are facing a bone charm or rune, it beats faster to get closer. The heart will whisper secrets if you press left mouse button while targeting a person or location. This place is the end of all things and the beginning. I don't know why, but I always love the heart. All of time is meaningless here. Neither seconds, seconds, nor centuries. centuries. Someday, Someday this place, place will devour all the lights in the sky. Hehe. <laughs> you cannot hide secrets from me. The one who walks here is all things. Freedom songs of comfort and bones gnawed by teeth. Oh! Ah! <gasps> mm. This, this is, is the place, place from, from which those who dabble in black arts draw their power. And this place is their doom. I can, I can feel, feel the great age ending. Oh shit! I thought I was gonna fall off. It scared me. Okay, is there something here that I missed? Oh, probably here something. No? It's just if I don't go over there. Nor over here. So I didn't miss anything. Oh, I think I need to fall down here. Yep. Pop. Bread off. This is a shrine for my guy. Runes and acquiring power. Once you've collected some runes, open the journal and go into the power sections to exchange them for powers. Runes can be collected and used to acquire supernatural powers. Dark vision or vitality. I think dark vision is actually a good thing. If you want to play stealthy. Power, dark vision. Press left mouse button to see in the dark and reveal living beings through solid walls. You can also see their fields of view as well as visual representation of the sounds you make. Level 2 shows you important items through walls like security devices, weapons, coins, ammo, keys, or traps. Yes. How you use what I have given you falls upon you as it has to the others before you. Now I return you to your world, but know that I will be watching with great interest. Okay. Hello, what is this? What the fuck? Why do I have so many bone charms here already? Holy shit. Bone charms. Bone charms provide small supernatural benefits. Locate them by listening for the song they emit. By default, you can activate up to three bone charms at once in the bone charms selection of the journey. Ow, 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 ow. Rumors and sightings. God. Uh, from an overseas covert field report. For over a year now, I have lived away from the Abbey with, without the company of my overseer brethren or the guidance of the blind sisters of the oracular order. Days have passed with me sleeping in the dens of, in the dens of cut person, murderers and worse. And the knights have seen me prowling through the worst alleys and wretched corners of the world. I have taken my meals with killers. At times I have ventured beyond the city walls, meeting in forgotten graveyards and the outlying ruins of frequented by those of ill means. My beard has grown long and I wear the weathered clothing and bits of boiled leather favored by the bottle streets and Hatter's gang. 
and by those rough men and women who make their trades, knifing others in return for coin. My hands have run red with blood, it's true, but I have selected my targets with care, choosing among these criminals and heretics who were not fit to live, executing them justly and using their deaths as means of building my reputation. So far this trick has allowed me to make my name among my murderous colleagues without taking the lives of the innocent. My goal is singular, I must impress the assassin named Daud in order, in order to get close to him. Of all the practitioners of black magic, we have to act none concern the Abbey as much as Daud. It is, it is said his mother was a witch from one of the archipelagos of Pandasia, of the Pandasian coast, taken captive by pirates venturing far from the isles. According to the legend, by the time the ship returned, the captain was dead and the witch controlled the crew, with Daud still, sh sh still a shadow in her belly. The early stories tell of a gang killed without mercy, moving among, among the shopkeepers and city watch officers of Dunwall like a reaper through wheat. When a period of silence followed, then a period of silence followed. Years we now believe he spent traveling the house, studying anatomy in the occult, in the great halls of learning and in hidden basements frequented by fellow dabblers in the forbidden art. Dodd is even purported reported to have spent a winter in the Academy of Natural Philosophy itself and for a time before a, a schism, schism, schism I think it's schism developed he countered the Bridgemore witches among he, he countered the Bridgemore witches among his allies all while he honed his craft and it's during this time that we believe he began to consort with the outsider new reports emerge of a dusky skinned assassin paid by the elites to eliminate their rivals in Dunwall and in other ma major cities across the Isles. Those who saw him and lived numbered in the handful, but all of them reported something strange. He appeared and vanished like smoke. From a nearby rooftop, he gestured with a... He gestured and a noble woman stumbled from her balcony, falling to her doom on the cobblestone below. Most recently, as this new threat of plague has risen in Dunwall, Dodd has been seen leading a gang of men in dark leather, dressed as factory whalers in their vapor masks. They seem loyal beyond comprehension, comprehension for one so unworthy, leading me to wonder if some of his magic is dedicated to lulling their minds and enslaving them. Only a month ago, one young girl claims to have come up upon a strange scene. Carrying a bottle of milk home to her crippled brother, she was taking a shortcut through the tailor's district. In a narrow street, she passed beneath the window and heard unusual sounds from within. Pushing aside a ratty curtain, the girl saw an abandoned apartment used by miscreants for gambling and trading haberweed. An occult shrine had been erected against the far wall, which she recognized from the teachings given by her local overseer. A man she described as resembling Dodd was kneeling before the shrine, muttering to an unseen spirit as if in argument. He took a carving made of pale bone from the altar before him, and the lights went out in a gush of unclean wind. Quiet as a field mouse, she slipped away, running until she reached home. There can be no doubt, Daud is an agent of the outsider and must die, for there is no limit to the evil this man might do. This is my solemn oath and the great purpose of my life. Until Daud is a dead man, his corruption has been purged from the world, I will continue to move among the depraved, winding my way towards him. I will not drop my guise or don my overseas mask again until Daud breathes no more. Another bone charm, another pouch, a mystical rat artifact. Anything else? Aha! Uh -huh. Mystical wolfhound artifact, bone charm, bone charm, bone charm, pouch. Why do I have so many things already? This is not. I'm confused. Is this because I've beaten the game already once? I have so many bone charms, what the fuck? Hmm. White rats won't attack you, no. White rats can be consumed for mana. Ah, this is probably because I have... I think it is because I... That makes no sense. Maybe it's because I have the DLCs and they give me like a boost in the beginning? Journal of Granny Rags. Ramblings of a Street Denizen. 
Of course I'll tell you, dearie. I won't keep any secrets from you in the end. All the dreary days of my life are like the windows of a house. From the kitchen I can see out into the garden where the leaves and stalks are brown and bug-eaten. You can see a little lump of dirt where something was wrapped in a blanket and laid to rest along the rows of twisting wine. vines. The front room looks out into the streets where the neighbors are setting fire to their homes, barricading themselves inside. Warm and snug, dearie. Don't forget about the bedroom either. It sees into a dreary alley where hooligans are playing a game with an old man. The first two are hitting him with sticks and the girl with them is kicking at his dry old ribs. Oh, to have those bones to boil them in a pot. No one lives in my house anymore, dearie. No one you'd want to meet. When I lived there with my husband, we were fine, fine people. Vera Moray, everyone would say. Your house is as grand as Boyle Man Manor. Better even. Your dinners are lavish and your parties are the best. When that young Sokolov came to paint my portrait, I was nearly still in my prime. Radiant, he said. And he was just barely a man, so young, painting all the best people across the land. Everyone wanted a portrait by his hand. All my friends. I was the only one, dearie. Wet with his paint, glistening on the canvas for a pretty coin. Wet with his paint. Hmm. It wasn't all parties and paintings. My husband and I weren't always at home, no. We traveled together, he and I, to the far ends of the Isles, beyond even, all the way to the red cliffs of Pandasia, to dig in the rock and crawl through the caves, holding up candles and squinting at the walls. Many precious things came, we came upon, but none so precious as the boy with the black eyes, dearie. All those marks and bones, carved so deep and polished so bright. I brought the old bones home, hid them from my dear husband. Then I learned to boil them and carve them myself. They made su such good presents, dearie. The little mute boy took them home. He loved them so. All the time, he came back with new bones for me, holding them up so I could see it in his eyes, even though his tongue was still. Granny, his eyes would say to me, carve these bones for me, make me another present, and went so far, so far all the way to Dunwall Tower, the royal headsman himself now, my little mute boy and his shiny, shiny sword. Better bones were what I needed, you see, better bones to carve and polish, scrape and glue. My dear old husband was always tired, I made him soup and then he was sick. Better bones was all, for my little mute boy carved in the name of the one with black eyes and after my husband was gone given away as birthday gifts I didn't want to live there anymore my, oh, what? so she's the bones of the husband so now I'm old and don't have many time to give my presents I don't have many to give my presents to it's sifting through the garbage for granny rags and feeding little birdies that gather at my feet. No one wants to have tea, dearie, especially those rude clouds on B Bottle Street. Slack John, his voice, always meddling with an old woman just trying to make her way. In the end, we'll be together with him, you and me in the dreary night with stars above and below. And always the one with the black eyes, dearie. So she's talking about the... Um, The, the outsider. Hmm. Where's the life in criminal records? Slackjaw. Why is there so many cards? From a series of letters sent by a member of the Bo Bottle Street gang. You want the chinwag on Slackjaw? What he was like when he was young before he got his name? Oh, he's got a cool head now, but it weren't always like that in the days before he was boss of the Bottle Street Gang. Time was, young Slackjaw wasn't such a reasonable man. Like most of us, he grew up in the streets, running with a pack of ragamuffins and avoiding the, lo the law, pinching whatever he needed. Dark-haired and dark-eyed, smoking a pipe by the age of ten. For them born in the brothels or coming from the orphanage, it was either the gangs or working with the mudlards, and no one wants that. Some got pressed into the navy or put down in the mines run by Pendleton or Boyle families. As hard as it was in the streets, as 
hungry as we got, at least we was free. By the time we weren't little ones anymore, Slackshaw was the one to watch, usually calling the shots when we took down a farmer's cart or a sidewalk street vendor. He'd come up with a plan, give everyone some part to play, and decide on the split. Most of us went along, because we learned fast that we made out better like that. More food, more coin, plus none of us wanted to deal with Slackjaw when he was in a rage. He worked on a couple of big jobs with Black Sally across town, and that was enough to get the attention of the other bosses. He wasn't a street kid anymore, now he is an up-and-comer, which meant trouble. Another guy who fancied himself as such was Mike the Fish, who was working his way up, running the protection racket among the factory women. One fine evening we were all talking in a body body show in the theater house mike the fish and his lot are there in the cheap seats too just down the aisle from us mike gets a wild idea he wasn't big on planning and throws a havoc ceramic platoon at slack jaw hits him square in the face and breaks his jaw we look to see if there's gonna be a blood brawl but slack saw just points at the door and we leave with mike laughing at our backs Waking up the next day without telling us why, Slackjaw motions for us to follow. He still can't say a word, so we just come along. We stop at the docks and Slackjaw buys, actually pays coin for it, a heavy chain covered in hooks. It is for fishing in the deep, something you'd attach to a long line off the side of a ship. It's about four feet, made of thick links, and there are shark hooks coming off it at different angles. Slackjaw's got that thing wrapped around his left arm, dangling at his side. Not sure how he'd know where Mike the fish was staying, but when he reached his girl's house, Slackjaw throws a bottle through the window just like that, and almost, it's just like that. It's almost noon, there's a bunch of screaming inside and Mike points his head out, looking wide-eyed and baffled. When he sees Slackjaw out the street, a look comes over his face that still gives me the willies. Pure murder. Mike comes out the side door bellowing like a blood ox. Holding a cleaver, heading straight for Slackjaw. When they come together in the street, Slackjaw spins and the shark hooks bite deep into Mike's arm and shoulder. He screams, but Shack Slackjaw holds onto the chain. He's standing there with his broker his jaw broken, clenched tight, with the chain wrapped around his left arm. Hooks sunk into Mike the fish, just knifing at him as fast as he can. Mike couldn't fight very well, hooked like that and using his left hand. But he was a big guy and he took a lot of stabbing before he went to his knees. Everyone was cheering at first, but then we all went quiet. It just kept going and going until finally it was just Mike the fish blubbering, crying like a baby in the sound of Slackjaw's knife. When it was over, and here's the brilliant part, Slackjaw took a note and stuck to Mike's face with a nail. It just said, if you want a job, come to Bottle Street. Slackjaw didn't talk for a couple of months, but word spread fast. By the end of year, once we we had a sizable gang going, he sent out letters to the other bosses telling them that he was running a brand new crew over on Bottle Street. Most of them laughed or beat up the guys who delivered the letters. Green Knight Trish even came back missing a thumb, but apparently Slackjaw was expecting that kind of reaction and, and had a backup plan. A week later, four of the bosses were dead. Seemed like a series of unfortunate events, but everyone knew better. One shot dead by the watch while standing in the middle the middle of a meat market, another slipping and falling into the water out cold. One of the older bosses found in the bed with his belly opened wide and a TV and pear stuffed in his mouth. Still not sure what that meant. And Sheila Barnesworth was found bubbling in a cauldron of hot wax. Slackjaw sent out another set of letters. Offers to the under bosses telling them they'd be treated fair as peers. He even sent Green Eye Trish with one of the letters, all, and all of the underbosses accepted. After spilling the guts of his main competition, Slackjaw went for stabilizing his business. Real neat like, calling in favors, smoothing things over, giving everyone a little bit of coin or drink as a bonus, showing that he, he could be like a boss, so everything got quiet, which always make the boys of the city watch nervous of course. Word went out among the royal spy masters, snitches, and the responsible citizens group. They call themselves, telling everyone working in a shop or sweeping off the front stairs of their homes to keep a watchful eye for Slackjaw and his men, trying to suss out what they were up to and what had just happened. But Slackjaw ain't stupid. He greased a few palms among the shopkeepers and the watch too, 
and then telling them that he was in town to stay to stay and that things would be run properly from now on without so much blood he was finally a real boss ready to settle into the business of moving whiskey running the hound fights and offering up the ladies and gentlemen of the night if you can take my meaning then the play came at first it seemed like a good thing few people got sick and everyone wanted to buy those potions from Sokolov or Piero elf elixir or spiritual remedy they call them Slackjaw told me he saw no an opportunity we already had a whiskey factory with, with a still where we could water the stuff down and sell it discounted doing the same with Sokolov's elixir was a smart plan pretty soon everybody in the slums was sick and business was good but after a while there were so many people down with the plague that everyone got scared everybody started acting real nasty and everything fell apart when people can't work, they don't have the coin for elixir, water down or pure. When the Empress died, it seemed like the world would slide into the void. Spymaster Burroughs took over and the Watch started using that new Sokolov technology. Watchtowers, tall boys and the Mark pylons. They put the wall of light across Cleavering Boulevard and cracked down hard. But Slack just surprised us again. Instead of leaving town on a boat bound for Morley or one of the other isles, he stayed and kept it all together. We get as much elixir to fight off the plague as the city watch, with their taxes and rations. That's what kept us alive so far. Crawley Bottle Street gag. That was a mouthful, Jesus! Spy, dog. I think I still have to read this one, right? My god! I do have so much to read! I think this episode is just going to be me reading and me exploring the Humpets pub. <laughs> From the personal memoirs of Hiram Burroughs, dated several years earlier. This is the fourth day, month of high cold. Progress continues on the suppression of gang activity in the distillery district, but more slowly than expected. The ruffians operating there have been cunning, I'll grant them that. But it's only a matter of time. I'll see their lev I see I'll see their leaders flogged in public and sent beneath the royal executioner's blade. If I had my way, that mute bastard would be working night and day, removing the heads that need removing that mute bastard so this is the same mute guy that granny rags was talking about right internally the empress does not seem pleased with my investigations it seems that it is beyond her thinking against her very nature as a trusting person to believe that traitors move among us but i know they do they must no, Jessamine would rather spend her time with the royal protector. At least he's likely to stop any immediate threat to her safety. But a strong arm is not what she what's needed against those who would undermine us. How will Corvo's sword stop a poisoned wine glass or an explosive delivered by a courier? It will not. There are many threats around us. Threats require meticulous efforts to, to police. Young Lady Emily is undisciplined, I'm afraid. Here within Dun Dunwall Tower, she receive, receives instruction from the finest tutors known, to, known in the Isles, yet her mother spoils her and she spends most of her time lost in imagination, wasting her time drawing or asking Corvo to teach her to fight with wooden sticks. The girl might rule the Empire someday. Every moment spent at play is a moment wasted. Shoring up security for the main gate leading into Dunwall Tower has been another pet project of late. To think that back in his day, Emperor Caldwin left it open to the public during the day, allowing anyone to come and go as they please. If it were up to me, I'd seal off access to the streets entirely, but the Empress won't hear of it. The water lock is much easier to protect, and if it were the only way into the tower, traffic in and out would be greatly reduced. Someday the wrong person is going to slip in and will suffer for it. Mark my words, no amount of security is excessive when it comes to protecting heads of state. The Empress also disapproves of my plans for Sokolov devices. Sokolov himself has no interest in security, of course, but he is vain and therefore keen to see his inventions deployed in any fashion. His wall of light he's been tinkering with has promise. In any case, at least I was able to convince the Empress to operate the pistol carried by the officers of the Watch. Why do I worry so when no one else seems to care? If I ever fall asleep, will it all sink into the ocean? Will the rough things clamber over the walls and fit themselves on our flesh? Fill themselves on our flesh? <coughs> this is what I see in the same dream several times each month. If only I had more sane things, more authority, I could protect us all. 
Perhaps I have been working too hard. Dinner and an evening of conversation with a certain lady of refinement might be in order. Perhaps somewhere nice in the estate district. Iron Burrows, Royal Spider. Jesus! This was so much to read. Holy moly. Anyways. Should I clear a space for Samuel then? If you like, but he won't use it. Why? He can't sleep in regular beds anymore, or that's what he says. Says he was in the Navy too long. Can you believe it? Oh. That mm. pile of wood out there? It's a hobble he built from an old rowboat. Where does Admiral Havelock find these people, I wonder? Ah, I thought it was because of Pendleton, but it's just Samuel who likes it. I had a sailor for a boyfriend once. He thought he'd strike gold digging in the Pandisian cliffs. They found his ship drifting empty. Thank you. Good day, Master Corvo. Good day, Cecilia. Out of my way, Lydia. Okay, let's see what you have to say. Well, let's get down to it. First off, I know that assassination is dark business. But sometimes, good men have to do bad things to make the world right. Our purpose is clear. We want to restore Her Majesty's line by finding and putting Emily Caldwin on the throne. To those ends, we'll hide, act in shadow, take them apart, piece by piece. Tonight, High Overseer Campbell dies by your hand. It won't be easy. He's protected by his overseers, an army of religious zealots. But if anyone can do it, you can. Your exploits are legendary. Campbell carries a private journal. Once you've eliminated him, get the journal, because we think it contains Emily's location. Recovering her is obviously critical, assuming she's alive. That's the gist of it. Remember our cause and strike true. We're counting on you. I will. Another thing. Campbell is holding a former overseer by the name of Martin. He's one of us, and if you manage to find him, give him whatever help you can. He's a master strategist, and he got caught working for our cause. It'd be good to have him back here at the Hellgates. Let me just read what you're reading. Oh. From a letter of public concern by anonymous authors. Oh, why is it so much? Why? I want to read it because I want to read everything, but it's so much text. What you've read here is the truth, regardless of what you will hear from the authorities who rule over us. It's not a matter of Coincidence that the former royal spymaster is the one who stepped in when the late Empress fell. We, who will remain nameless, believe that these events are interconnected. The signs of opposition are all around us. The circle of designs, originally intended to provide light and warmth in our homes, have been turned against us as a means of inspiring fear and controlling our movements through the city. And where did this plague originate? Some say it was imported, a wild theory, perhaps. One of our members risked her life to obtain an inter internal report from the government, which we will be printing and sharing soon, called the Exquisite Talboy, extolling the virtue of this newest member of the City Watch. Those in the streets below, these virtues are horrors, spread by stilted thugs who rain down fire on the sick and the poor. The sick and the poor. To these eyes, the Talboy is another government bully. Armed with incendiary devices, thick armor, and standing high overhead, looking down at the common people from the city. We now know that the tall boys are heavily drugged. The tall boys are heavily drugged, imbibing a substance that renders them resistant to pain, but also dulls whatever empathy they might normally possess. Exquisite? We think not. Copy these words and share them with your neighbors. And remember, when the tides are lowest, the truth will be revealed. Ah. Oh. So I think that's everything, and I just need to go to Samuel. But... Oh. Corvo. Yeah. Hello. I'm Callista. Hello, Callista. I work here for Admiral Havelock. I'm sorry to intrude on your business, but this is important. I suspect you're going to kill the High Overseer. That wretched man. There's really no reason for you to listen to me. But my uncle, Jeff Kernow, still serves as captain in the City Watch. But he's a good man, and my only family. The chatter in servant circles is that Campbell just took delivery of an exotic poison. And I think I know why. 
My uncle's not corruptible like the rest of them. Campbell is going to poison my uncle. Do you think you could protect him? You used to do that, right? Before you had your current profession. What do you mean by current profession? I, an assassin. I, have, uh, I haven't done anything yet. I haven't assassinated anyone yet. Stop being such a... Annoying little shit. Okay then. I think that's the episode done. Let me just see if Samuel has anything to say to me. Hello, shit lady. When you want to set out, just give the word. Okay, so you don't have anything to say to me then. Hmm? Alright, I wanna... Let's just... <laughs> listen to the heart. What does it have to say about him? Samuel Beechworth went to sea to forget a hopeless love. He succeeded. I'm ready when you are, sir. The boatman has a good heart and respects you. Aww. Samuel is a simple man, but he knows service. the little red haven and all its tributaries, down to the smallest inlet. He has many scars. I look forward to my adventure. Some from the flow of the river crests. Some from the nameless monsters of the deep. Samuel was once eager to hear Havelock's stories of the sea, but perhaps the Admiral is not what he expected. Hmm. There's a room over there. Okay, but let me just... Where is anyone else so I can hear their thoughts? Each and every night the black-eyed outsider visits upon a hero's dreams. He is Piero Joplin. Even now, he visualizes the next invention. Sebastian. I wish you could see it too. Poor Piero. His elixirs have cured so much for so many, but they cannot cure his brain fevers. Wait, are there new new books to read? I think this one I read already. Will be this section I also read. Dead counter responsibility. Manual for Minister Commissioned by the Lord Regent in the face of the growing plague crisis, the dead counter is a position that will only be given to officers. Usually of junior or middle grades. In most matter of edict or curfew enforcement, these officers will defer to the acting officer on duty. However, any dead counter will have command in situations related to the plague and the handling of the dead, including those with late stage plague symptoms, called weepers in common parlance. Starting in the month of rain, interested officers may apply for the test and, if accepted, for the two week training tour. Pay will be administered in coin and rations of elixir at one and one and a half normal pay grade. Field experiments from a series of lectures on a natural philosophy by Pierre Joplin. Of course, I have attempted to improve upon Sokolov's designs. Of course, and why not? After all, it's likely that his thinking was influenced in some small way by our time together at the Academy. We are all part of a community serving to unknot the mysteries of the cosmos. Even those among us who possess the greatest minds are often led to a fruitful line of conservation by, how does one say it, our intellectual subordinates. Sokolov is no exception to this. Despite the glamour of genius, he has cast over the aristocracy. And further is, and further it is true that many of my experiments have failed. No need to gossip about it behind my back in your social clubs and in the very chambers of the academy itself. Great ambition requires risks. You may laugh now at my door to nowhere, but someday you will not. Your children will likely see it as a common as commonly as you see the electric lamps lighting your streets at night. But a few short years ago, you would have laughed at Sokolov's arc pylon or wall of lights. Your laughter, your condescending smiles, they are nothing but evidence of our own limited imagination. Fuck, I did not... Ah, so this is the... Piero's door to nowhere. Piero's door to nowhere. The door to nowhere has proven to be a safety hazard, but for me, this project is an endless source of inspiration. 
With the proper application of energies, I believe I can transform the door frame into a window of sorts, one that will allow to travel a traveler to cover the distance from my workshop to some distant arbitrary point in a single step. Currently, the steps the step leads to a sheer drop straight down into the courtyard, but <laughs> but in time it will bridge the gap that will boggle the mind. Such work is many many years away to be sure, but if I survive this plague, I'm sure to succeed. Oh hi! So this is the door to know. Why is there another book? Uh, Nuva by Piero. It is through no fault of my own that the average student has passed. Ah no, this one already. This one is all. Does part of the soul live in the heart? If the heart keeps beating, does that mean that the spirit is never released into oblivion? I can Did I hear heart this already? Ever with electricity. There it is. Play your way. Powers. Your powers you obtain from this can be used creatively to defeat enemies or move through the environment. Blink from one from roof to roof, possess rats and fish, or slow time before rushing a group of enemies. To all of this for nothing. Disable security devices or make them work in your favor by using a rewire tool on the circuitry panel for the security device you want to hack. This consumes the rewire tool. Rival wall of lights or films and watch hours will harm your enemies instead of you, while rewired alarms will be fooled again. What mm. now? Jump in the water. Ah! It's still go around and listen to the heart speaking about some other people. But I can do it at a later time. Right now, let me see. Objectives. Locate enemy. Optional. Spare Captain Colonel. Hmm. Yep. I'll leave the episode here i'm sorry we didn't do anything special this episode it was just a bunch of reading and finding out more about the world we live in but i think it does add something so now we have more information i guess for the next uh, mission and it's also nice to not just always be going around killing people or stealth doing shit it was a bit hard to read i'll be honest but i like it i like to read i think reading is fun <laughs> and it's also it also paints the picture of the game a lot better and everything that's going around everything that's happening and it introduces us to the new characters i think we'll see them most of them we'll see in the game but i think in the next mission we'll see some of them I know it won't be long till we see the um, flag job. I think it's like in the second mission or something like that. But yeah, other than that. Such laughter. And they are singing old songs, linking arms. But that was from a happier time. Deals are made here. Sometimes under the influence of wine. Okay. And sometimes the influence is the point of the night. That's fine. So, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please don't forget to leave a like. And if you want to see what's going to happen next, how the story is going to unfold, don't forget to subscribe so you'll be notified. And hit the bell. So you'll be notified next time I um, 
except I upload anything. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Bye.